And we're live. Here we go. What's up, everyone? Just like I said, I'm bringing you fire today. First and foremost, you guys know how I start my podcast. Uh, I want to big a, a big shout out to everybody that's out there. One, especially my son. Cannot wait to see you, buddy. Uh, he's going to be home around June 16th. And number one, for all of the other military personnel everywhere, globally, we thank you. We salute you. Thank you for keeping us safe. Uh, to all the essential workers, the grocery store workers, the gas attendants, the mechanics, all of the people that are keeping America running right now. Big shout out to all of you, as well as first responders. You guys know how I feel about our police officers, um, first responders, firefighters, EMT, um, and just a, a real quick before we get into this, and I, I'm going to cover this, you know, this thing that's going on right now in America with uh, George is it's absolutely fucking disgusting. And, uh, you know, I, I was I was thinking about doing my own pod uh, specific session on it, but I'm, I'm too angry. And I, I, I know anytime that you try to get a point across and you're using anger, um, it's not going to be for a good message. So just key note, I know this is a very important topic we will be covering here within the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, but thank you to all the first responders. Thank you so much. Today is a a very uh, I got a very special guest. I I admire this this young man. I I've seen him in action. I watch what he does, and uh, the the one thing that you you're not going to get from this guy is bullshit. Um, if he says something, he does it. I've known him for a very short time, and uh, I mean he's truly an inspiration. Um, being a fitness professional like myself, he's in the fitness industry. But over time, he has created multiple streams of revenue, multiple businesses. He's a real estate investor. He's a gym owner. He is a brand and culture builder. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm excited to have this guy on, my boy, Tony Chowdhury, man, owner of Fusion Gyms. What's up, brother? How are you today? I'm good, man. How are you? Man, first, I got to just go on. You look great right now. You got these big <laughs> boulder shoulders popping out. I love the new do. And just so you know, Tone had this beautiful long hair. He just shaved his head, bro. Yeah. You're looking uh, a little Vin Diesel rockish <laughs> right now, bro. Keep it up. So what's Thanks, up, man? man? How are you? I'm good, man. You know, it's a crazy time we live in. But, you know, um, I think we'll all come out stronger from it. You know, maybe not initially, but a lot of times in life, you know, you can't really connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards, you know? So maybe, you know, a year from now, two years from now, we're going to be able to look back, you know, at this and um, it'll make us stronger as a country. It'll make us stronger as a community. It'll make us stronger as entrepreneurs. Yeah, man. Uh, it's, it's, it's been, it's been nuts. Now you and I, you know, kind of the leadership that I'm following and we just doubled down, man. We, we doubled down on our efforts. We doubled down on our voice. We doubled down on anything that we can do to provide value to people instead of just kind of sitting down and kind of letting COVID happen. You know, one, one big thing that I've been preaching since day one, and I know you're super, super busy. I don't know if you got a chance to catch any of the shows. Um, but I actually couple, watched yesterday. Uh, yeah, I watched the one with uh, Ed. With Ed? Okay, yeah, yeah. Big Ed. Um, uh, you see, because it was an interest to you, gym owner to gym owner, right? <laughs> uh, it sparked a little interest. And uh, for those of you that follow me, just real quick, because, you know, uh, Tony knows kind of the leadership that I follow and kind of what our mission was. If you're just catching the show, we, we've kept it very simple. And Tone, this is, this is what I've been preaching since day one. How to get through COVID. Like right now, Think of monumental events that has that have happened globally. You know, I'm just 9/11 is what I've used as the reference, right? Everyone under uh, everyone remembers 9/11, and I remember where I was at. I remember what happened. I remember everything on TV. I remember where people were. I remembered everything, and I, and and you don't realize how big a part of history that was. Like what was written, the history that was written. And my question to everyone is, what are you going to write? What's your COVID story going to be? You know, some people, it's going to be the worst thing in the world. Some people, it's going to be what crushed their business, what shattered their dreams, what's emptied their bank account. Um, but then on the other, there's going to be some that redefine themselves. There's going to be some that, that truly double down on what they had to do to create 
brand awareness, to create a better business, to create a, a better system. Um, you know, uh, Tom here uh, and you know, you just being in the industry, uh, Tom Fensmacher from from uh, from Premier up here in Allentown. You know, he uh, he replastered his pool because he had a pool. So it's either going to redefine you or it's going to make you well, make you or break you one or the other. But there's seven steps. Tell me what you think about this. Number one, exercise. Mm -hmm. Get your ass moving, man. Just go. I don't care how old you are, where you've been. Get your ass out. Move. Number two, read. I know you're an, an avid reader. Um, yeah. You read multiple books. I mean, I think the one time you were telling me you were working on like two or three books at a time. Um, uh, keep a routine. So important. Keep that daily schedule. Keep your rhythm going. Don't waste time. Be productive. Keep a positive attitude and when in doubt, help others. Like that's been my battle cry since day one. And I I, I know you're a huge uh, advocate for people exercising with your training background. But uh, you know, you had you had some some crazy things happen in your life. You went from, you know, seven figures to zero. Yeah, you know, and 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 here, just so you guys know, look at his his Instagram handle. His Instagram handles relentless for fusion. And there's a reason why I have on the ticker relentless because T bro, you are relentless, man. You, you don't stop, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and I want people to just hear a little bit, just a, a quick snapshot of like your history and, and, and just a little bit about what makes Tony Chowdhury, Tony T. Yeah, sure, man. You know, I think I get my relentless attitude and um, I believe that I believe our environments really mold us and make us who we are. So, you know, my father came to this country he lived here for five years without my family. I'm from Bangladesh. It's a third world country. Um, I'm one of uh, uh, six kids. I'm the youngest boy. and I have a younger sister. Um, he came to this country and he didn't speak the language. He didn't know anyone. And, you know, uh, he saved enough, enough money to bring his entire family. Once we got here, there was we lived uh, across the street from the projects. Um, you know, it was just me, my five brothers. Uh, I'm sorry, me, my four brothers and um, my mom and dad for, you know, the vast majority of my life, my sister was about 10 years younger than me. So she wasn't in the picture for a very long time when we first came to the country. And we lived in a two bedroom house and we made it work. You know, um, I didn't even know that I wasn't poor, you know, like my entire life, because my parents always told me how um, good I had it compared to where we came from. I honestly didn't know that I was poor until I was like in fucking high school. And the reason being is, it's all about your perspective. So because I, we see the problem is we look at what we don't have, you know what I mean? True happiness, I heard this quote a long time ago and it sticks with me. True happiness doesn't come from always getting what you want, is being happy with what you have. One thing what you have, that's what makes you happy. So I had a very great young childhood and you know, I was, I was very, very optimistic and I always looked at things from a, a positive mental attitude because that's how I was raised. You know, when I, the, a lot of crazy things have happened to me as I grew up, but my environment really shaped me. Like I was the only Indian kid in an all black school pretty much my entire life. My entire life, I was picked on for being different. I was picked on for being, you know, not like them. I was picked on for not having the nicest shit. So I, it, it did, see, life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. Those things made me who I am. Just like COVID is making us who we need to be. You get what I'm saying? Like bad shit always equals good shit down the road. You know, it becomes a pivotal point, you know? So- If you um, let it. If you, if you if you're proactive about it, just like right. you just said, you know, with with your seven steps is it's about having, you know, a, a routine. It's about exercising. It's about reading. It's about mentally growing. If you are proactive, that's being proactive in this shitty situation because your hands are tied. You're not allowed to do shit or you can be reactive. You can sit there, binge watch Netflix. You cannot do shit every day and you can allow life to happen to you. And then you can cry. Oh, whoa, it's me. You get what I'm saying? So through my whole life, you know, I, I, I had a really rough young childhood and then um when i was 18 and when i was 16 i started working out i really loved it i fell in love with it it was pretty much my entire life fast forward two years i got into bodybuilding uh the best way to pay for my supplements was you know to work in a gym so i got a job at la fitness you know uh and pay, pay for all my food because as a bodybuilder you had to eat a lot so i got a job at la fitness again i was just saving to go to film school but again life doesn't happen for you it happens to you I never knew, never thought that this would be my life. I never knew that I would invest the next 40, 50 years of my life and make it my life's work to be in the fitness industry. It was really a part-time job. So some of you that might not know what your passion is, 
You don't know what your passion is until you start and try it. So if you're young, try new shit, try things. Because really at the end of the day, I never knew that I would love this so much until I actually did it. Got a job at LA Fitness. I worked there for about a year. I uh, rapidly became one of the, uh, the best sales reps in the entire country. First nine months, trash. Literally, my name was not even on the sheet of the best salesman. And there was like, I don't know what, LA Fitness has what, like 15,000 employees? Yeah. My club was never mentioned. You know, there was like, at the time, there was like 220 clubs. We were probably 219 of the shittiest sales. Then I met uh, this guy. His name was Nolan. He was the best salesman in the fucking country. He was the man. We see his name on number one on the list every single time. Finally, one day I got a chance to meet him. And I said, hey, man, how do you do what you do? He said, I read books. I said, great. What books do you read? I read X, Y, and Z. Great. I shit you not. I had $100 to my name. I went to the bookstore. Went to Borders at the time. I bought... uh, the Art of Selling, little green book of how to get your way, little se- red uh, a book of sales answers, and then The Secret. And I had like 30 bucks left to buy a transpass for the week to get to work. This is why it's so important to read. Not because reading is important. My dad always told me as a young age, you got to read, you got to read. Never told me why. Because when you read, you can fast forward life. Let's say someone writes a book about their life and how they built a multi-million and multi-billion dollar business. They're going to tell you all the pitfalls. They're going to tell you all the things to do and not do. Then you can gather up their past. You can draw from their experience. And then you can invest that into your future. So say that again. I, say that again. They got to catch that, bro. Gather up their past. Yep. You draw from their experience. And then you invest it into your future. Hmm. I got those four sales books. Sat there rapidly reading through this book. And I fucking loved it. Literally within two weeks, my sales, I went from trash, like two grand every two weeks to $20,000 every two weeks. Now, mind you, this is tw- this is 10 years ago, tw- 11 years ago. You know, so 20 grand in personal training sales every two weeks is a big fucking deal. Then for like three months straight, I was just killing it. Number one, number two spot every single month. And then the following year, there was a new company starting called Retro. I w- went and worked there for a year. Um, you know, I rapidly grew in, in that company. Right before I turned 20, I realized that I want, I want to run my own business. I didn't want to work for someone else. You know, I wanted to write, you know, the, I, I want to write my own book. I didn't want to just be the narrator. I wanted to be the author. So, uh, and, and in life, it's not about what you don't have. It's about what you think you need that stops you. And it's not about, it's not about who you're not. It's about who you think you're not. See, the most successful people in life don't have the best resources. They're just more resourceful than you. So, you know, I wanted to start a a gym, but hey, look, I didn't have money. To build a gym costs about a million dollars cash. You need about four or five hundred thousand to build the space out, and you need another four or five hundred grand in equipment, plus you need another six months worth of operating expenses. You need about a quarter of a million dollars. So all in about a million dollars. Um, didn't have that. Fuck, I didn't even have 20 grand to my name. But what I did have was a knowledge, experience, and background of hundreds of entrepreneurs and how they started their businesses, you know, and um, I had the experience of running and operating gyms already, you know, for some great gyms like LA Fitness, phenomenal, Planet Fitness, phenomenal, Retro Fitness, phenomenal, because they're giving me the blueprint on how to run and operate their business. So then I saw what was wrong with their blueprint. I chopped them all up, and then I made my own version of it, which is why it's called Fusion Gyms. I fused what was great about all three of these gyms that I worked at. So it's about using what you have, right? It's about being resourceful. What I realized is most gyms, guess what? They don't really worry about the personal training. They're focused more on the memberships. That's how they make money. So I started cold calling gyms. I said, hey, look, my name's Tony. I own a personal training company. I'll give you guys $40,000 a year to outsource personal training out of your gym. Almost every single one said no. I call literally hundreds of gyms, every fucking gym within a hundred mile radius. How far are you willing to drive for your dream? I was willing to drive a hundred miles a day each way if a gym said yes, because I figured, hey, you drive 60, 75 miles an hour with an hour and a half. I could be at work, work 12 hours, hour and a half back. So one gym showed a little bit of interest. It was Gold's Gym in Allentown. Okay. And I kept calling weeks after weeks, months after months. Finally, I got the owner on the phone. He said, yes, I talked him into, listen, if you're really, pa- you can feel how passionate I am, right? So if you're really passionate about what you do, other people will believe in you. 
So I talked him into giving me my first month and a half rent free. I agreed to give him $40,000 a year. You're probably thinking 40 grand just to train in a gym. No, no. So you got to stop. You have to stop looking at things from such a small perspective. You got to think bigger, right? Look, to own a studio, a small personal training studio will probably cost you three grand a month. Then you have rent, you have operating expenses, you have to build the space out, you have insurance, you have payroll, you need 10 grand a month just to be broke. And then on top of it, you're competing with the big box gyms. Instead, I was going to give this gym four grand. I got access to thousands of members that was interested in personal training. They was, was a 20,000 square foot facility, not 2,000. And then they took care of the facility so I can focus on what I was good at, which was personal training. So long story short, he, he agreed to do it. And, um, you know, within, I'd say first, my first four months, I made $150,000. Mm. Imagine being 21 years old, making fifteen twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month, mm. just from personal training. I had four personal trainers underneath me. I was giving them, I was paying rent, I was paying my payroll. And I look, I had a personal training business inside of a massive gym. Then I had two gyms. Then I had three gyms and I had four gyms. Next thing you know, I found an opportunity. Again, you, one of the things as, as an entrepreneur, you have to think there's more than one way to do it. In my head for eight fucking years, I always thought that you needed a million dollars to own a gym. You don't need a million dollars. You just gotta have a desire. So instead of looking at it from a traditional way, I started looking for gyms that were for sale. I started looking for gyms that were going out of business because they were on a burning ship. They wanted to fucking jump off. They wanted someone to take their space. Why? Because when you sign up a commercial lease, most times you personally guarantee it for 5, 10, 15 years. On top of it, you have mortgages, you have liens. If your business is losing money, they want to get out. Most times they will give you the fucking business for free, okay? Literally free. My first facility was in New Britain, okay? It was 10,000 square feet. The landlord spent $450,000 to build the space out. And guess what? The, the guys that owned it, they spent another 600000 in equipment. It was fucking beautiful, okay? I got that gym for $40,000. Mm. And you're probably wondering, well, Tony, how? Well, it's about problem and solution-oriented selling. You just got to find problems and offer a solution. I found a problem. The problem was the gym was sinking. The guys wanted to get off. Now, if the owners close the shop, they can't. It's not just simple as closing the doors and just leaving. You got bills to pay. You got to pay the bank back. They owed the bank about $700,000. They owed the landlord about $400,000. This gym was only a year and a half old. So I stepped in and I said, hey, tell you what, leave the equipment. I'll get the landlord to forgive your personal guarantee for $400,000 and I'll personally take that personal guarantee. So now you're off the hook. Your equipment on the market, it's a year and a half old. It's like a fucking car. You've lost more than half the value. Someone's not going to pay you retail for it. A wholesaler is going to come buy everything and then they got to make a profit. You'll probably get like a hundred grand. So instead of only getting a hundred and still being on the hook for like four, leave the equipment and then I'll take over the space. I went to the landlord, told him the plan. They agreed. I gave them a $25,000 deposit. I got my first six months rent free, okay, to, to have enough runway to make the business work. And guess what? That year I made my first million dollars in revenue. I took mm -hmm. a business that was barely making $200,000. We made a million dollars that year. So I was like, wow, I fucking did it. So I was like, I could do it again. So the problem was my ability to sell, my ability to acquire gyms, far outpaced my ability to actually operate those gyms. I heard this quote, uh, I heard this someone, someone tell me before, hey, look, Tony, stop biting off more than you can chew. I was like, fuck that. I'd rather bite off more than I can chew than nibble on mediocrity. Well, guess what? Choke I did, right? So I went from one gym to fucking being the owner of four gyms. Four. Literally within, like after that first fiscal year, I had four gyms the following year. Now, at the time, dude, I'm 25 years old, okay? And I have four businesses. My rent row at the time between four gyms was like $150,000 a month. My payroll was like $60,000 a month. Uh, that doesn't even include my other expenses. Now, I just thought that, guess what? And, oh, by the way, my gym at the time was only five bucks a month. And you're probably wondering, well, Tony, how the fuck did you make that kind of money on five bucks a month? Problem and solution oriented selling. Problem was most people hate fucking working out. Most people hate joining a gym. Most people hate 
dealing with the sales rep there, right? Most people know when they join, they're not probably going to work out for a year, maybe six months. They're going to periodically work out. So I said, you know what? My goal is to make fitness as convenient and affordable as fast food. So what I'll do is I'll get rid of the sign-up fees. I'll get rid of the expensive monthly fees. It'll be $69 annual fee and it'd be five bucks a month. So it, was, it was about $109 for the year. My goal was 5,000 members. At 5,000 members, I made about 550 grand. The rest of the money I made on personal training. So I gave them the platform if they wanted to get in shape, boom, here you go. If you're not sure how to do it, here, look, we're going to show you how. We'll give you a free session and they'll buy personal training. So long story short, that's how we made money. I thought I could duplicate that location two, location three, location four. But the biggest challenge you're going to face in business is not lack of capital and it's not finding opportunities. It's finding the great people to be able to actually do it the way you would do it if you were actually there. So I made some bad decisions. I made some bad hiring decisions. I should have let people go when I, you know, when, uh, uh, a lot sooner than I actually did and it actually wound up costing me all four fucking gyms. OK, now, so hold on. I want to I just want to I want yeah. everyone to understand they're there and. I'm paying attention. I'm listening to everything that you're saying. And I want everyone to just understand something right now. You know, th this, everyone knows me to be like performance-based sales, le leadership, all that, all that good shit. Right. And you're speaking my language, but I want everyone to just kind of think about what you're saying. Notice it was, I started, it was, I did, I went, I drove, I resourced, I searched, I created. There's that there's this this accountability. You got to remember everyone who's watching this. This sounds great. But the at the end of the day, there's one person that made this all difference. It was Tony's ability to say, I'm going to go do something like that right there. If you can't understand, it's what he's doing. It's his actions. And, and you heard where he came from, his education. He, he doesn't. How many do you have? How many college degrees do you have on the wall? Okay. Um, how many Ivy League schools have you studied at and partner? Okay. I just wanted to, to make sure, right? High school grad, right? Barely. Barely, right? So when they called my name for graduation, fucking blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh shit, wait, this is drill. Um, <laughs> it's 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 what he it's what Tony did. And it's just I I, I want to go back to how I started this. There's a reason why he has right there in his name relentless you have to be relentless you have to bring that word resourceful to life i'm sorry man i just wanted them to understand that this isn't you know some secret formula right it's it's, it's being hard work. resourceful it's hard work. hard work and using what's around you you know what i mean yeah. and the biggest the biggest aspect the one of the main reasons i'm successful honestly is because of youtube and audible Say it again, bro. You're probably wondering why or how. Because you get access to people like Brad. You get access to people like me. You'd probably never meet me in the fucking street, and I probably wouldn't talk to you, right? But I put the information out there for free on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook. Brad does as well. Andy Frisella, you know what I mean? These are Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk. Guess what? All these guys that have done it, they put the information out there. It's free. They're not charging you shit for it. And the people that are charging you, they're probably not going to teach you shit anyway because the motherfuckers that have really done it, they don't need your fucking money. Right. They don't need you to pay for a fucking course. They right. made it. They're just doing their part and leaving their legacy. They're just trying to do for you what, what they wish they had themselves. I wish I had some of the resources most people have now. You can build a fucking company in like two fucking days. Like that. And you can get the word out like that. Yeah, man. Uh, it's 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 amazing. I could see you. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. Silent okay. I was on my phone. I silent my phone because it kept so mul mul multiple businesses. You got a lot going on right now. Um, you just finished seventy five hard. I think you're on phase one, right? You're, are you on? Are you doing phase one, or do you take a month off? I did. I did seventy five hard twice. Twice. And then I did phase one two times, and I did because for phase two you had to wait uh, thirty days. So I decided to do phase one again. So I did phase one twice. I did phase two once, and then right now. I'm just taking, well, I'm still doing everything. I'm just not uh, working out, I'd say, seven days a week. I'm working out like five, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, I'm just taking a little bit of a breather because I have 
so much going on. I have two houses under construction. Uh, we're expanding our North Street location. We have new equipment coming in. Um, so I'm just extremely busy. So like 75 hard, this shit's called 75 hard for a fucking reason. It's fucking hard. And it's not that the tasks are hard. It's hard to do every fucking day, no matter what you have going on. Right. Discipline. Yeah. Discipline. I put down in, uh, I made my, my, my basement kind of like a mini mock home gym. Yeah. And, uh, I put right, like I, I stand on my treadmill every day and I got this flag down at the end, bro. It's literally been everything for me. It's uh, one of Jocko's flags from echelon mm -hmm. front. It says discipline equals freedom. Mm -hmm. And there's so much. And, and, and the discipline of being able to do the things that you don't want to do, you know, but you do it. But something changes and you're right now, you're, you're scheduling this time as like a programmed release, right? This is what I'm doing. I'm taking now, I'm probably going to do another 75 hard here uh, in a couple of days, uh, probably like the second week of June when my kid gets back, we're going to do it together. Um, the mindset, right? And, and you're big on mindset. And a lot of people right now are going through a lot of crazy things right now, especially I, I don't even want to get touch base on this, on this, you know, what happened with this cop in Minneapolis. There's a lot of people you going through watching the video. What's that? It fucking broke my heart watching the video. Yo, I got you fucking, I was disgusted, man. And you know what? I, I'm just sitting there thinking, what a, if, if I was standing there and listen, you know, I'm a kind of people could say, oh, you're a convict. You're anti-cop. I'm not anti-cop. I'm, I'm pro police. I, I back the blue. I support the blue. And there's a lot of great cops out there. Um, but just think if if. I just think of like the people like if I, I picture this is what I envision. I'm sitting there and I'm watching this happen to this guy. I don't think. Not, not, I don't think I know I would have been, I would have got arrested for stopping it. Like you, you hear him grasping and, and bro, I don't even want to get fucking started on this. I'll, I'll go to yeah. another level and no, it's a really crazy hard. thing. So let, put it back to positivity. Yeah. You, you are great at the inspiring part, right? You being able to, because it started, you, you started this as a trainer. Um, you started it as a trainer. And you were inspiring people to take action on their lives. Now you do a lot for mindset. You know, we all, you and I both have a lot of the the, the same leadership that we follow and uh, we get excited by, you know, it's part of our pedigree and part of our DNA. You know, there's a lot of people going through things. So I want you to be able to just quick touch base on, on people are fucked up mentally right now, mm -hmm. right? Tony's version of it. You're sitting there, you know, you're, you, you got the stage and you have the ability to give people words of inspiration of hope. What does that message sound like? Because, you know, I, I, I know you are a encyclopedia of knowledge when it comes to the art of mindset, right? Cause there's, there's, there's techniques and there's really just calcifying a, a neuro pattern in your head and you have it because you could spit this shit. Like it's like, you're looking at it. What do you tell that person? What's, what's that, what's that conversation sound like? See, I mean, no one's immune to it. Not even me, you know, like we've been on lockdown for three fucking months. You know, what you focus on expands energy flows where attention goes, you know, in the very beginning where they kept giving us these deadlines, you know, May 1st, May 15th, June 1st, and then it would come and pass, it would come and pass. Bro, between my two businesses, I'm losing $50,000 a fucking week. That's enough to pull your fucking hair out. That's enough where some people will commit suicide, you know? And I'm not losing $50,000 a week in revenue. That's revenue and debt that I still have to pay between my rent, my mortgages, and things like that. And there were times where a week or two weeks, bro, I literally couldn't get out of bed. I literally would wake up, go downstairs, eat, go back the fuck to sleep. It was like a, it was a never ending cycle of, a, it was a fucking nightmare. It was literally a nightmare. You know what I mean? And I was literally depressed, you know? And, but after like a, two weeks of this shit, I'm like, fuck this. 
I just got to take my lazy ass outside. Mm. Believe it or not, <laughs> exercising does fucking help. <laughs> hey, I mean, if you can't tell looking at me, right? <laughs> exercising helps. <laughs> I have four dogs. I was like, look, I just got to get some vitamin D. First step, right? What we have to do is common sense and common knowledge is not just not common practice. And that's why most people get common results. If you want uncommon results, you got to do uncommon things, right? So uncommon things are doing what you need to do when they need to be done, not when you fucking feel like it. Mm. I would wake up in the morning. I'd mix myself some fucking... Look, bro, I was... I went from... I did 75 hour fucking twice. I did phase one, phase two. Super fucking discipline. Clean as fuck, lean as fuck. And then this shit happened, bro. I'm eating fucking half a dozen donuts at once, sleeping eight hours a day, not even night. I'm sleeping at night, going to bed at like three, four in the morning. It's easy to go into this fucking spiral of bullshit. But you got to focus and begin with the end in mind. Do what you can do, okay, that you have control over. What I had control over, okay, I can go outside and I'm going to walk. Guess what? It's fucking spring. It's fucking beautiful outside. Go walk around the fucking neighborhood. Go walk around the neighborhood. And, and then I started giving thanks. On my walk, I was just give thanks for what I have. Be grateful. Remember, energy flows where attention goes. Your subconscious mind and your conscious mind will expand what you feed it. And in, the, and, and in the moment, it might feel like it's fucking stupid. But over the span of many moments that make up a lifetime, it will make the difference between who you are and who you want to be. So I started giving thanks every fucking day for like 30, 40 minutes every single day. I started listening to my audiobooks. I started listening to my podcast. I started getting back into the rhythm. I would literally, I started coming to the gym and just hanging out of here 10, 12 hours a day just to keep myself from falling asleep, right? Like literally, I would stand at the front desk. I would literally look for different loans and shit that I can apply for. Literally, just work, you know, just keep my mind busy. Did you know that a ship will sink faster at harbor than sailing the seven seas? A plane will rust out faster than flying if it just sits, you know, uh, uh, on the ground, a car will break down faster sitting outside versus you fucking driving it because those things are meant to move just like the human body. If you broke your leg, right, and we put your body in a fucking cast, your legs in a cast, and you laid in bed for two months, what happens to that leg? It deteriorates. The human body is made to move. Your mind is made to move. Okay, it's just like a river. As soon as that water stops flowing, it stagnates and becomes a swamp. Your mind becomes a swamp of bullshit when you keep it from flowing. So you have to get moving. Start physically. When the mind is weak, exercise the body. When the body is weak, exercise the mind. If you do those two things a day, your life will never be the same. Boom. Say it again, man. Reading, feeding, <laughs> right? And getting your body moving. Um, and listen, just so you know, none of this was rehearsed. I haven't talked to T in a minute. And it's the exact yeah, it's same fun. language. It's the same language. It's the same thing. But you got to be able to take control. This is this is right here. I'm so glad you were on today, bro. I miss you too, man, by the way. I can't wait to come down there and give you one of them fucking. You're welcome to come work out at the gym if you need a real gym for a workout. Yeah. You know what? I may take the trip. I'm here yeah, I... every day. I'm, I'm, you know what? I need a road trip and I need something for me and my kid to do uh, while, my, while the wife's at uh, getting ready to open back up. Listen, T, thank you so much. This was awesome. Um, I want everybody, and, and listen, if you're watching this, share this. I want this message to get out. I want as many people that I, that I can possibly get. I want you following Tony, following uh, your, what's your, your Facebook? It's, it's just your first and last name. It's my first and last name. Yeah. Tony right. Chowdhury. And then go on Instagram, follow him relentless underscore four underscore fusion. You're among greatness here, man. And, uh, brother, I'm glad to be by your side. Uh, I'm glad to, to be able to watch and witness this journey. And again, for all of you that are, are, are watching right now, we all have conflict in our life. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care where you're from. You could sit down and you could let it just cripple you. You could let it just destroy you. You could let COVID happen. You could let racism happen. You could let all these, these things that are happening in your life control you. Or you can take control of your life and you can conquer your conflicts. You could stomp the shit out of it. But it comes down to you doing one thing. You got to own it. That's first and foremost. You got to own everything. Not why me, not woe is me, not oh my God, how could this be happening? And constantly talking about the negativity because just like T said before, right? Your mind goes where the focus goes and the energy goes. You put that energy into bad shit, bad shit's going to happen. It's simple as that. Tony, 
Thank you so much for today, bro. It's a pleasure. Can't wait to see you. And again, uh, please follow my man. Uh, he he has always, always, there's a great message. Uh, for all my Philly peeps down in Philly Fusion Gyms, be on the lookout. Uh, he's got a new flagship that he's about to open. What's the address on that one? 505 KNORR. That's North Street. It's right off of Rising Sun. It's in Northeast Philly. It's 30,000 square feet. Uh, it's going to have two boxing rings, 20 boxing bags, huge indoor turf, uh, two circuits of hammer strength. Uh, it's got 20 Olympic benches, 10 squat rags, dumbbells up to 150 pounds. Uh, and it's all cast iron. You know, it's mm. old. Yeah. That's great, man. And uh, your your current gym right now uh, on Grand Avenue, That's uh, what's the address on that? It's 2801 Grand Avenue, Philadelphia, PA. It's a, it's a right off of the boulevard. You know, they're both in Northeast Philly. Monster clubs. Tony, thank you so much for your inspiration. Keep being you, brother, and, uh, you know, continue to be a force for good. Everyone else, we will see you tomorrow at some point. Uh, I got my buddy Dale Kessler going to be on. He's a real estate uh, monster here in the Lehigh Valley. He's going to be talking about real estate, um, what it is to get back in. And uh, everyone else, kick ass today. Conquer your conflicts. Peace.